All right, I have good news, I have bad news, and I have good news. The good news is we're learning about inverse trig ratios today, which are super fun. The bad news is this is a pretty difficult section to wrap your head around, so strap in for the ride. If you're not listening to this on volume, then I frankly have no mercy for you. This is like gonna be just impossible to just look at. I hope you're not in the habit of listening to these videos without volume, but it's your own fault. The other good news is that I found a meme with Dwight Schrute, so that makes me happy because The Office is one of my favorite shows. Uh, so here's the essential question for today. Okay, what we have been doing is you have been finding trig ratios if you're given an angle. So they'll say, well, we'll get into what they're saying, but how do I go backwards? That's the question for today. How do I find an angle if I know the trig ratio? So. Let me tell you what we're talking about. We just filled out this whole unit circle, and so you know how to figure out the sine of pi over 3. You can look on your unit circle, and you can see, hey, the pi over 3 angle is this one. You can look at the point. It's over 1 half, up root 3 over 2. You know sine matches with the y coordinate, so it's root 3 over 2. Yay, easy. Same with tan of 45. You can look at your little unit circle. Tan of 45 happens to be 1. Easy stuff. So that's what we have been doing. But what if we go backwards? What if they tell us, hey, we know that the trig ratio is what is root 3 over 2. What is theta? And I'm actually going to change this to 1. They're asking us, hey, I know that the trig ratio is 1. So what is the theta? Theta. So we're going backwards, and notice that I picked exactly the ones from the last slide. So I know that sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So the angle that gives me root 3 over 2 is pi over 3. Does that make sense? So I can look on my unit circle. I can look around, hmm, where on the circle is the y value root 3 over 2? Oh, that's right at pi over 3. Yay, easy. And, okay, I can look on my unit circle. Where's the tangent 1? Well, it's right at 45 degrees. And how did I choose degrees or radians? Whatever. It was random, just matching up from last slide. But here's the issue. Here's where it gets really complicated. Remember when we were solving square root type things and we said, hey, x could be 2. Or there's this other hidden solution that we often don't think about, like, when you square negative 2, you also get 4. That's exactly what's happening here. If you look around your unit circle, there's actually always a second place where sine or like a second angle that gives root 3 over 2. So just if you don't have your unit circle out, get it out. Like it'll really help to look at it. If you notice, there's also, I believe this angle is 2 pi over 3. This angle also has a y value of root 3 over 2, and so actually there's a second answer. Same thing here. If you look for where else is the tangent 1, you'll notice that also down here at, what is that angle, uh, 225, there's another angle where the tangent is 1. And the really clever ones among you will be saying, wait a second, can't I do coterminal angles as well? Couldn't I go backwards and say, hey, this negative 135 degree angle also gives me a tangent of one? Or couldn't I make like an extra loop and say, hey, a 405 degree angle also gives me a tangent of one? So the point is there are actually infinite different angles that give this tangent, if we look at all the coterminals, and if we look at the two different places on the trig ratios, and this is a problem for us because it's infinite solutions and we have to be able to have some protocol for identifying them. So let's talk a little about what's going on here. Here's what your calculator can do for you, all right? In addition to looking at the unit circle, you can have your calculator do this stuff for you. So, just like you can put into your calculator, hey, sine of 30 degrees, 
and it will spit out one half because that's starting with the angle and going to the ratio. If you know the ratio, you can use what's called inverse sine or arc sine. And this is going backwards, just like we did on the last slide. So test this out for yourself. If you put sine to the negative one of one half, put that into your calculator. And by the way, this lives right above the sine button. It's like the blue part of the sine button. If you put this into your calculator, you should get 30. And your calculator won't say degrees, but it'll give you 30. Why? Because we're going backwards. So if we know the ratio, we're going to use the inverse function and it will give us the angle. But here's the issue. Remember what I said last slide. There are infinite angles that actually work. For example, with sine to the negative one of one half, I also happen to know that another place that sine can equal one half is 150 degrees. But our calculator does not give us that answer because our calculator is only capable of spitting out one answer at a time. And if you're listening to this without volume, I'd like to see you interpret what I'm saying here. Bah, listen to it with volume. What are you doing? Okay, so anyway, here's what mathematicians figured out. They standardized which angle the calculator spits out. So for sine, the calculator is only going to spit out an angle in either quadrant one or quadrant four. So it'll give you an angle that's either here or here. It will never give you an angle that's here or here. And the reason is because we can only have one answer and mathematicians had to decide where do we want that answer to be. The reason they chose quadrant one is because signs are positive in quadrant one and then they're negative in quadrant four. So at least if we choose those two quadrants, we can get uh, like some of the positives and some of the negatives. The calculator, if you know the ratio and are looking for the angle for cosine, now here it's a little different because cosine is positive in quadrant one, cosine is also positive in quadrant four. So this isn't going to work because here, the cosine like would be equal to each other. I'm not explaining that really well. Anyway, the point is for cosine, in order to get one positive and one negative quadrant, the calculator is gonna give you an angle in quadrant one or quadrant two, but never quadrant three or quadrant four. So maybe this is getting a little bit vague. Let me tell you what I mean by this. If you look on your unit circle, you should be able to find two places that sign to the neg. So, sorry, you should be able to find two angles that give you negative root two over two. And those two angles are 225 degrees and 315 degrees. But if you put this into your calculator, and definitely try this now, your calculator will give you negative 45 degrees. Notice this is coterminal with 315. It does, let me write that here, coterminal with 315. So that's an angle in quadrant four that your calculator gave you. Notice that your calculator did not give you 225, because like I said, it's always gonna give you an angle here or here. Likewise, if you put cosine to the negative one of negative root two over two, it will only give you 135 degrees. Even though if you look on your unit circle, there's another place where cosine to the, yeah, the angle that gives you that ratio, the other place is 225 degrees, but your calculator won't give that one to you. Let's look at the tangent last, and I'm sorry if this is getting garbled, I know this is a hard concept. Your calculator will give you an angle that's either in quadrant one or quadrant four. So even though if I look on my unit circle, I can find two places where the tangent angle is negative one, either at 135 degrees or 315 degrees, your calculator will give you negative 45 degrees. And just like sine, notice that this is coterminal 
with uh, 315 coterminal. And if you don't know why, basically we can add 360 to get the 315. So your calculator will never give you this angle. It'll never give you an angle in quadrants two or three. So here's what problems are going to look like in this section. And maybe I'll just do one example because this video is getting a little bit long. We need to find theta. Notice they've given us a formula where they gave us the ratio and we need to find the angle. So this is the appropriate place to use sine to the negative one. They gave us sine to the negative one. Sorry, they gave us the ratio. So we're working backwards. So we're going to use arc sine. But remember, there are a couple different places where you can find angles that equal arc sine of 0.3. So in the first part of the problem, I'm looking for an angle that's between negative 90 and 90. Let's think about what quadrants that is. Negative 90 is down here, 90 degrees is up here. Oh good, if you remember sine, yeah, when I put it in my calculator, my calculator will give me an angle that's either here or here. So let's just stick this straight into my calculator. Sine, arc sine of 0.3 is 17.46 degrees. And notice that did show up in quadrant one, and that does match with this criteria of the angle being between negative 90 and 90. But we know that there's another place where the angle can also equal the ratio of 0.3. So in the second part of the problem, they're asking, hey, what's the angle between 90 degrees and 270 degrees? In other words, where in quadrant two or three does sine also equal 0.3? And here's where it gets tricky. We need to use reference angles. So the first thing I need to think about is where else is sine positive? I know that sine is positive in quadrant one. That's the first answer that I got. Where else is sine positive? Well, it's also positive in quadrant two. So the other place where sine equals 0.3 is gonna be in quadrant two. And I need to use a reference triangle here. So let me draw a picture. We know that this angle is 17.46 degrees. In quadrant two, let's draw our reference triangle. We're solving for this angle and here's the tricky part. If you remember how we constructed our unit circle, you know that we put these reference triangles in the other quadrants to find out where uh, or what the values of sine, cosine, and tangent will be. So let's put the reference triangle in there. This reference angle is 17.46 degrees. So what does that make theta? Well, if I have 17.46 degrees here, and this angle and this angle have to add to 180, does it make sense that I'm trying to solve, hey, what angle theta, let's make this x theta, what angle theta, when I add 17.46 to it, gets me to 180. So in other words, to find theta, I'm gonna subtract 17.46 degrees from 180. Whew, this is a really hard problem. I think we'll do a lot of practice with this in class because frankly, this is just very difficult. The other angle is 162.54 degrees and you can check it yourself. Put sine of 162.54 degrees into your calculator. When I do that, I get 0.3. And that's exactly what we were saying. We're trying to look for sign that gives me 0.3. All right, long complicated video done. I promise we will do much more of this in class. Quick summary, wow, that was hard. It's really good to know what quadrants where sine, cosine, and tangent are positive and negative. So study your unit circle for that. It's also really good to know what quadrants will give you angles in. And so you need to have these things memorized. Your calculator is gonna give you angles where, okay? We'll talk about all this in class. See ya.